Matthew message 13 continuation the place and the audience on the mountain Matthew chapter 5 verse 1 says and seeing the crowds he went up into the mountain and when he sat down his disciples came to him the new king called his followers by the seashore but he went up into the mountain to give them the constitution of the kingdom of the heavens. This indicates that we need to go higher with him for the realization of the kingdom of the heavens. It is very meaningful that the constitution of the kingdom of the heavens was decreed upon a mountain. The sea signifies the Satan-corrupted world. When we were caught by the Lord, we were in the Satan-corrupted world, endeavoring to make a living. But after the Lord caught us, he led us up to a high mountain, signifying the kingdom of the heavens. This indicates that the kingdom of the heavens was not established on the seashore, but on the mountain. In the Bible, a mountain sometimes signifies the kingdom. For example, according to Daniel chapter 2, verse 34 to 35, the stone cut without hands broke the image into pieces and became a great mountain that filled the whole earth. This mountain signifies the millennial kingdom. Hence, in the Bible, a mountain signifies the kingdom, especially the kingdom of the heavens. Furthermore, being brought up to the mountain signifies that if we would listen to the decree of the constitution of the kingdom of the heavens, we must not stay on a low plane, but climb up on a high mountain. We must be on a high level to hear this constitution. On the seashore, the law simply said, follow me, but for the decree of the constitution of the kingdom of the heavens, he brought them to the top of a mountain. Following the law may be rather easy, but listening to the constitution for the establishment of the kingdom of the heavens requires that we climb up to the top of a high mountain. To his disciples, verse 1 says, And when he sat down, his disciples came to him. When the new king sat down on the mountain, his disciples, not the crowds, came to him to be his audience. Eventually, not only the believing Jews became his disciples, but also the discipled nations, Gentiles, verse, 20, uh, verse 19. Later, the disciples were called Christians, Acts chapter 11, verse 26. Hence, the word the new king spoke on the mountain in chapter 5, 6, and 7 concerning the constitution of the kingdom of the heavens was spoken to the believers of the New Testament, not to the Jews of the Old Testament. In verses 1 and 2, we see that the Lord taught the disciples, not the crowds. The crowds that gathered around him were the other circle, but his disciples were the inner circle. Although you may be on the mountain, you must also be in the inner circle. For the constitution is not for those in the outer circle, it is for those in the inner circle. Throughout history, there has been a great debate concerning to whom this decree was given, to the Jews, the Gentiles, or the believers. According to our study, we have come to see that it was given neither to the Jews nor to the Gentiles, but to the New Testament believers. There is no doubt that the disciples were the Jewish believers at the time the degree of the constitution was given. However, when they were there on the mountain listening to the decree of the kingdom's constitution, they were the representatives not of the Jewish people, but of the New Testament believers. In chapter 28, verse 19, the Lord told his disciples to go and disciple the nations, that is, the Gentiles. This means that the nations would be converted into disciples. Therefore, both the Jewish and Gentile believers were disciples. The audience on the mountain, composed mainly of Jews, represented all the disciples. Concerning the nature of the kingdom people, now we come to the first section of the constitution, the section concerning the nature of the kingdom people. Probably not many Christians have seen that chapter 5 verse 1 to 12 reveals the nature of the kingdom people. All Christians should be the kingdom people. 
However, the situation today is not normal. Many believers are not on the high level of the kingdom people. The kingdom people are the overcomers. In God's economy, every believer should be an overcomer. To be an overcomer is not to be something special; it is to be normal. Thus, every believer should be part of the kingdom people. These verses describe nine aspects of the nature of the kingdom people. They are poor in spirit, mourning for the present situation, meek in suffering or position, hungry and thirsty for righteousness, merciful toward others, pure in heart, making peace with all men. Suffering persecution for righteousness, and suffering being reproached and evil spoken of. Every aspect begins with the word "blessed." For instance, verse three says, "Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of the heavens." The English word "blessed" does not adequately translate the Greek word here, for the Greek word conveys the meanings of both blessed and happy. A number of versions use the word "happy" instead of "blessed." However, we should not use the word "happy" in a loose way. The blessedness and the happiness here is not a light thing; it is something that is rather weighty. When you hear the words "happy," "are the poor in spirit," you should not shout or jump up and down. To be happy in these verses is something deep. Poor in spirit. To receive the kingdom of the heavens, in verse three, the new king said, "Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of the heavens." Although many have spoken about the blessings in these verses, I have not heard anyone speak about the spirit in verse three. The translation of verse three in the Chinese version is very poor. It says, "Blessed are the humble in heart." Although the scholars who work on the Chinese version generally did a very good job, they did not see the difference between the heart and the spirit. Another verse in this chapter, verse eight, speaks about being pure in heart. As the Chinese translation speaks of the humble in heart and pure in heart, because we came into the church, many of us did not see the difference between the heart and the spirit. The kingdom of the heavens is firstly related to our spirit.